Welcome back. Good afternoon. I'm Tina Bernsketter with the Missouri Head Start Association, and I am so pleased um, to be, get to be a part of this today. Um, the association provides advocacy and training work for Head Start and early Head Start uh, professionals and uh, families also. And so uh, we're just so honored to get to be here with others in the family of Head Start and then with our partners through uh, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. Before we continue with this afternoon's summit, I want to make sure that each of us is aware of a great resource that we have um, right here in Missouri. From that grant, um, there's been a series of conversations and ongoing dialogue that has happened, and it's all based upon serving children of all abilities, especially um, in an inclusive model, which is something that we have talked about today. But I want to make sure that, that we're all very aware of this great resource that we have. From that grant funding, we also learned um, that we, we also have um, training resources that are available to you. One of the greatest assets from that is the uh, Special Quest State Leadership Team, which many uh, individuals here are members of. If you are, would you wave your hand so we can recognize you? These are individuals not only uh, representing Head Start and Early Head Start, but they represent every child serving state department in Missouri. And so this really gives us a great encompassing look about the leaders in our state um, on that level. Possibly more importantly is what happens at the local level or the child level. And from that grant, we also um, began several multiple um, state, or excuse me, community local leadership teams as well. And I know that we have several programs that are involved in that as well. Would you wave your hand so that we can see who that is as well? And they provide um, very um, intentional and very deserving services to our children and families and bring that back to a state level so that we know um, when we're thinking on a state level what really matters because it's at that child level and bringing it back and forth. Um, so I want to I want to let you know that there are free resources that are available through specialquest.org, which that website is right here for you, and that is a national training resource that's available to you. One of the videos that we'll see in just a little bit will uh, be talking about that, but it's actually step-by-step -step models that you can use with your training staff about serving children in an inclusive model. It will talk about how we as LEAs and Head Start can work back and forth and provide maybe some talking points or some first steps um, for, for talking together. Or if you've already had that relationship, as we'll hear from this, um, this panel in just a little bit, what you maybe want to be thinking about in the future as you work towards um, more collaboration and partnership, that marriage that Clarence was talking about. And so I want to also let you know that the Missouri Head Start Association's website, which is up here as well, um, this is where you'll go for resources about the state leadership team on Special Quest as well, and also for all the resources for today's documents will be on that website at the end of this week. What we know about um, Head Start and local education agencies is that it's all about what happens with that child. It's not about the 10% as we were talking about at lunch. It's about how that child is impacted and how that family feels about their experience and their opportunity to take it back and share with that child in their living room, in the, in the kitchen when they're making dinner, things like that to fully include that child and know that they are, are worthy of every good service. And we know that none of that comes if we're not working together. And so we'd like to show you this uh, video from Special Quest that kind of outlines what our panel will be talking about in just a few moments. And if someone can help you and someone can make your job a little easier, you know, sometimes, like like I said, I'm like a real enclosed person, but if there's someone there that will help you at the 
and they're willing to extend their hand, sometimes you have to meet them halfway. You know, sometimes you have to take that little step. No one in this world can go through life just on their own. I'm doing this all by myself. Somebody has to be there to help you through. All the people around Christopher are so involved in what he needs to be doing, and they're so excited about what he's capable of. I think it really helps them make uh, a deeper investment in Christopher in terms of time and in terms of love, because kids need both of those. When I was invited to be on a team, I was really excited about it. I didn't want other parents to have to go through hearing, we don't take kids like your kid. And so I was very excited to, to be on a team. Make sure that we're all communicating, that we're all working together for the good of the child. So, because in the long run, the child is the one that benefits from uh, the group of professionals that work together. There are some times when, you know, you think, well, this should be their job, they should be doing that. On both sides it can happen, but I think also you need to think, what is the benefit and how is this helping the family? That's the primary reason why we're all doing this, so I think you have to think of how is it going to benefit the family. Share the vision that what we want to do here is provide support for families, infants and toddlers with special needs. It's about the children. Share that with others, that um, your confidence is going to make a great deal of difference in how well your, your child succeeds in life in general. Um, having a confident parent um, standing up for your child is going to help them. I have a commitment to including children with disabilities, and so does the center director. And that without that, the teachers are going to pick up on it in a minute and be apprehensive. Sometimes you just have to be there for them, not even about the child, for them, and listen to them. Because a lot of, especially these teens, nobody listens to them. So they just want to be heard. They just want to say something and someone to listen and go, mm hmm and just, that's all they need. How we can benefit from another, because you know, every day we are learning from each other. Never heard, well, let me see if I can reasonably accommodate, or I need to talk with my, with my staff and see if there's something they feel they're up to. It's always been yes, and we'll figure it out together. I think that the support that the family gave the staff was equally as important because we would just watch and see what they were learning and how they were handling all of the, the visits you had to make to the big hospital on the mainland and all the surgeries that he had to go through and all the new news that you find out about his body and its involvement, that we could only gather that as strength for us in taking care of him. The communication is everything between the staff and the parents. If you don't, if you don't have any communication with your parents, how are you gonna? Um, how are your parent gonna know anything about her child? I mean, well, what's going on at the school with that with her kid? Or how are you gonna know anything about that kid if you don't communicate with the mom? It wasn't just uh, like a business type thing. They came in personally and actually listened to me, and I was able to vent a lot of feelings and a lot of emotions that was going on. My concerns with my kids were the number one thing that was going on, and uh, it was consoling. When your plan. Um, your plan of action is supported by an administrator, a family member, um, it gives it more force and um, more believability. Getting them the resources, encouraging them, telling them that we know you can do this and I'm willing to help you with this, I'll be here, I'll connect with the right resources for you. Doing whatever it takes to provide the services for the child and uh, providing encouragement uh, for the teacher. We share concerns for families, but when we overlap, that can support those families, and there's a lot of ways in which we don't overlap. So I think that, that the getting to know you piece of it and uh, sharing with people about the law, you know, and, and what the requirements are in each system really helped us to get through that, to realize that this isn't an issue of taking over one another's job, but it's really an issue of being able to provide the best services for children and families.
One, I want to come in with an idea of if we can do that. We can accommodate needs and provide for those needs. Joining that continuous improvement process because it really focuses you on moving ahead and setting new goals. And like I said, you know, once you put them on paper and once that learning coach comes to check on you, you accomplish them. And at the first special quest, when we looked at what our goals were and our objectives, um, we talked about a lot of what we were going to do and we initially were going to do this big training and use a lot of information from Special Quest and as we, we um, started to put that together we realized the staff really needs to have social interaction first. They really need to set that, the stage for that relationship. Programmatically our two agencies are really in sync too. We both have a very family friendly emphasis and we really want our parents to be advocates for their children. Sometimes you do feel overwhelmed and the co-workers are just really great to have, um, whether it's a one-on-one -on -one or just many classroom assistants, really helps to take that overwhelming away. We've also generally have been able to help families find quality childcare. We've been able to train child care providers in the special needs of the child so that they will be able to receive quality child care. And so it, it's really meeting the needs of the total family and child. It's helping people to identify their goals and their interests and giving them a process by which they uh, work on those tasks to get those goals attained. Uh, and I think the whole configuration of having a parent on the team people, a person representing disabilities and all of those different aspects, just so unique, gave all of those people a chance to work together and then giving them the materials with which to work. And that link that throughout the year you have a person who's coming in to work with you on those tasks. We have really focused on outreach to the community for them to know us, to know what we're capable of providing, to know what a resource we are to the community and can we find that place where we fit together, where, where we overlap, and can we work collaboratively to help the families and reduce the bureaucracy and reduce the duplication of services and um, actually strengthen each other. I don't know how it would have been without all of them because it is a team effort by everyone, and everyone is so accepting and giving and wants to um, Christopher has been the center focus of all of that, and he knows it. He's very loved by everyone. It isn't just a job for a lot of these people. They love what they do, and they do a good job at it.